where, when, and why the, f the first Ferris wheel was built? Well, in this DVD you will discover the true meaning of the Great Wheel. In 1890, April 9, the state of Illinois licensed the World's Columbian Exposition. You are probably wondering, what is the World's Columbian Exposition? Well, it was a landmark event in American history and culture in honor of Christopher Columbus. The fair was a celebration of the 400 years of Columbus discovering the new world and upgrading the progress of man in science and industry and culture. In October 1890, the corporation director's appointment Daniel Burnham as their, as their construction chief. He wanted something to make the world's, the world's Columbian Exposition stand out like the 984 feet Eiffel Tower at the Paris Exposition in 1889. George Washington gave Paris fixed an idea of a wheel. Sketch, sketched out construction number of cars, number of seats on each one, and presented his idea to Burham. Designing and building the wheel wasn't easy. Some difficulties occurred in obtaining finance, financing. That time, the country was in the middle of a severe depression, but Ferris was still enthusiastic about the wheel. His ideas were treated by some as those of a lunatic, and, and, he, and, he, and he was known as the man with the wheels in his head. The engineers and the architects believed he was making a fool out of himself. They agreed that the wheel is impossible to build, or if it, it is, it could not be operated. But Gail Ferris just ignored it. The Ferris Wheel Company received $300,000 from the sales of the tickets to the fair. It was to be built on Central Avenue on the network. Cars were running day and night. Piles were driven down 30 feet, 30 feet. A lot of work was being done. On March 18, 1893, the 40-ton axle arrived to Chicago. It was 45 feet. It was 45 and a half feet long, 33 inches in diameter. Two days of placing of the first tower poster was completed. Shortly after came, shortly after came the problem of raising the axle, but in but in about two hours the problem was solved. Everyone worked hard. The wheel was almost done. The Columbian Exposition opened on May 1st, 1893. While the workers were still building the wheel, by June 9th, the wheel, yet without cars, were, was ready for a trial run. In 20 minutes, it had completed one revolution. During this, Ferris was in Pittsburgh, and as soon as he got the news, he immediately ordered the 36 cars to hang. So, so on June 10th, one car was hung. By June 20th, 20 more were hung. And soon, soon the building was completed. The cars were 24 feet long, 13 feet wide, and 10 feet high. And weighed to, to, to um, 2,600 pounds, 20, 26,000 pounds each. Car had fancy crystal wire chairs. The doors, the doors at each end were provided with secure locks, firefighting equipment, and guards. Each car provided a room for 60 people. The actual wheel was 250 feet in the diameter and 264 feet high. 
the, the, the wheel was open to the public and it ran smoothly. A trip was considered of a one revolution, during which six stops were made for loading, followed by one nine-minute non-stop revolution. The view of the city at the top was breathtaking, not only that, but miles out to the lake and the surrounding states were seen. Now we'll be joining us is Mr. Carroll, who's an architect and a good friend. Question number, question number one, Mr. Carroll. How, how did Ferris come to be involved in the design of the Ferris wheel? Oh, that's a very interesting story. Uh, George Ferris was an engineer, and he designed a number of, st of steel buildings and built them. When he came to Chicago with other engineers, they met with Daniel Burnham. And Daniel Burnham, instead of just telling them about the Columbian Exposition, said to them, look, the architects have done everything so far. We've come up with wonderful buildings. The engineers have done nothing. I want you engineers to step forward and do something really wonderful, something better than the Eiffel Tower, something that will make this fair really significant, and invent something other than a, a tower. I don't want a tower. Now, George Ferris thought about that, and he said, I've got the idea. He came back to Burnham with a design for the Ferris wheel. As an architect, do you find the, the, the Ferris wheel ever made amazing? Oh, I do indeed. The Ferris wheel, you've got to remember, was the tallest building in this country at the time it was built, the tallest structure. It... Uh, it was an amazing structure. It was something that had never been seen before. It's very important in the engineering context because it was such a remarkable first time to build something as big as that, uh, totally unknown before, never been built before. It's an amazing structure. Thank you, Mr. Kell, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to have been here. The film was a great success. The people who went on the Ferris wheel got souvenirs when they took off. The Ferris wheel. Those are the two tickets. The top one is the adult ticket, which costs 50 cents. The bottom one is a kid ticket, which costs 25 cents. For the adult ones, that they printed 750,000 copies. For the kids' one, they printed 250 copies. 250,000 copies. And this is a painting of the Ferris wheel and and the world and the and the fair. And you can see how air balloons, people happy and people enjoying themselves. This is a comparison. The bigger one is the George Francis wheels, and the bar and the other one is the old Na Navy Pier ones. As you can see, there is a big difference between the two wheels. This is the Chicago flag. One of the stars represents the World Columbian Exposition and the Ferris wheel because it changed the history of Chicago, and a lot of people came to see this great event. Thank you.